Hi, this is David Yak, and I'm going to answer a common question I get asked, what is a Power Platform DLP policy? And why does it matter to me as an app maker? DLP stands for Data Loss Prevention. Admins create DLP policies to control who can use what connectors in a Power Platform environment. They don't do this because they're mean. They do this because they want to protect the data that an organization has and ensure proper usage according to organizational policies. DLP policies categorizes connectors into three buckets. Business data, no business data, and blocked. Don't get too hung up on the name because technically an administrator could change business data to be A and no business data to be B and block to be C. What's important is the characteristics of each of the buckets when a connector is placed in that categorization. Let's talk about the business data category. Connectors placed in the business category can be used with other connectors that are placed in the business data category. They can't be used, however, with connectors that are in the no business data category. So what this says is if I had a CDS connector and a SharePoint connector, and they were both in business data, I could build an app or a flow that used both those connectors together in those apps and flows. If one of those connectors was in the no business data, I wouldn't be able to build an app or a flow and use both those connectors at the same time. So when you look at a DLP policy, you want to look to see what connectors you're using that are in the business data and make sure you don't need to use any other connectors that are not in there with them. If you need to, you need to talk to your administrator to get those added to the business data category. Most organizations will set up some DLP policies that categorize some of their connectors as business data and some as no business data and some as blocked. The no business data often refers to things like Twitter, Dropbox, and so forth. Now an organization could have a policy, for example, that they don't use Dropbox. And in that case, they would place that in the block bucket. By placing it in the block bucket, that would not be available to be used in any apps or flows. Regardless of the other connectors you use, it's always blocked. DLP policies can be created both at the tenant level and at the individual environment level. That means that multiple policies can apply to an environment. If there are multiple policies, for example, one at the tenant level, maybe a global policy that the company created, and one at the environment level for your specific environment, those are combined together and give you the most restrictive access allowed, meaning that if a connector was placed in the business category or blocked, it could not be unblocked or made non-business by another policy. Now you might be saying, as an app maker, why do I care about these DLP policies? They sound great for administrators, but I don't need to bother with them. Well, you should be aware that an active DLP policy can stop you from building your app or flow. So if you need to use a connector that is not allowed, blocked, or is in the non-business data and you need to use also one from business, it's not going to let you save your app or flow. Now the other thing to be aware of is if you don't communicate with your administrator, new policies or updates that they make to the connector buckets, so recategorizing them, can break your existing apps and flows. So what can you do to keep your apps and flows from breaking? You can find out what policies are currently in effect. So you should always look at the environment that you're dealing with and look at the DLP policies. You can check those out via the admin center. We'll look at a quick example of how to do that. Okay, I'm here in the Power Platform Admin Center, admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, and I want to take a look at the DLP policies that currently are in effect in this tenant. You can go to Data Policies, and this is where you'll see the different one, and we can see that there's a org level or tenant scope one that was created, as well as an environment specific one that was created. And even if I'm not a global admin or a tenant admin, I can look at the DLP policies and see what's in effect. So if you come in here, go ahead and edit the policy. What you want to pay attention to is not so much the name, but the connectors. And you want to look at how they're grouped into the different buckets. So we can see that there's two that are in the business category, and there's 354 that are in the non-business category. So any of these ones that are in the non-business category, we can't use with the two that are in the business category. We also might be interested in scope, but this is more of an admin thing. This says whether it applies to all the environments, certain environments, or excludes certain environments from the policy taking effect. So that's what you really want to take a look at when you dive in and look at the different policies, especially the ones that apply to your environment or that are tenant-wide ones that apply to all environments. You should also tell your administrator what connectors you need to use for your apps. You should work with them to make sure that the policies that they build are compatible with the apps that you need to build and negotiate as possible to be able to do that. 
Now, the advantage of working closely with your administrator is that you can enjoy your day at the beach without getting constant calls telling you that your app or flow broke because the admins deployed some new DLP policies. Thanks for listening. Click subscribe and learn when we publish new videos.